Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 6 of the Roots of Africa. I hope last week you enjoyed Ghana culture. Today we are going to talk about South African traditional culture and hope you'll enjoy yourself. Sit back and enjoy. Welcome. This Easter, welcome and spend your Easter holidays at Adere Safari Lodge in the vast savanna of Kedepo Valley National Park, Uganda. We provide you with exotic ambience of beautiful cottages, rooms and swimming pools at affordable rates of 125 US dollars for Uganda residents per person sharing and 150 US dollars for foreigners at full board. We also offer memorable and restful transformation safaris and a tour to Karamoja. Adere Safari Lodge, everything right where you need it. We love having you here. For more information, contact our telephone number below. Greetings to the viewers. Uh, my name is Yandisa Sokanyele. I am from Mount Aleph. Uh, um, I am Kosa, Princess Tepi from the Royal Batroqua Nation in South Africa. I am the Vice President of IDO Network in SADC. I'm also the Second Assistant Secretary General within the Executive Committee of the Royal Batroqua, where my portfolio, the responsibilities are uh, strategic partnerships, and entities. And also beyond that, I'm also the founder and the executive chairperson of Future Lift Foundation, which is a nonprofit making organization that looks after the community development projects and programs, which is the responsibility of us as cultural institutions and also as cultural as royals. Thank you. Greetings, yes. My name is uh, Prince Dumelo Tsodetsi of the Royal Batoka Nation. Firstly, are you a person that loves fashion? Um, your background, why you fell in love with fashion quickly before you got, get to the work that you do and the projects that you're currently working on? Fashion in, in the South African culture, it is one element that we all love because we grew up knowing that, that you know, all what we are wearing, that is our fashion. And now we are seeing that there is the trend where we are developing it and it, it is evolving where we are no longer just wearing them as ceremonial, but uh, also we are infusing our fashion even in our workplace, even in the professional spaces, or even when we have our evening events or the gala dinners. And uh, what I love about it, it is because of such that it is, um, it does not grow old. You can always find something that is old and ancient, and yet you find it it's still relevant. It looks so unique and so beautiful. As you can see, the regalia that we are wearing, this is our uh, cultural royal regalia, and somehow, again, you can use it without that. So I'll start with uh, Prince Tumelo. What he's wearing is Mudianye, where the other one we call it Mogorodo. These are the hats that Basutu wear. So because Batlokwa, we, we, we are a nation, yes, but most of the time we have always uh, been associated with Basutu. The language we speak is that of Basutu and most of our, our attire, it also really looks the same. And then so starting from him, the hat that he's wearing is Mudianya, which is worn by our, our fathers. And then you will see King Lizia as well wearing his own one, which is different than that one, which is Mkoroto. That one also, they go with the hierarchy. The more King the you are, there is a different Los Lanka, the blanket, and then uh, and the hat that you wear. The more, you know, the hierarchy in the in the community you are, those we see them by the, the signs of the what you are wearing as well. Just similarly, even in the Western culture, you know, you you know the police person, you know the teacher, you know the nurse. So even with us, it was just according to our cultural stru uh, structures in the community. And then also the blankets, yes, they have got different labels, but as he has already mentioned, they all have the different connotations. There is also, this is one of the rewards when after you know a, a young girl or a young boy has gone through 
uh, teenage and then through the rite of passage into now being welcomed in being a man, being a woman, you also get rewarded with, uh, with these. You probably have seen just like in Omembes where we get a lot of these presents and now you can wear it with authority. And then also you'll see that our fathers, they always carry the stick. Remember that any man should not be walking around without any weapon, even from the olden days, so that if you meet Isilwani, the beast or the animal, you are able to defend yourself. And then, uh, so that is about the, the blankets. The blankets we can all wear, even us uh, as women, actually it's our pride. With the blanket, so that we don't offend people, uh, we have seen on, on others where they're trying to wear it. There are stripes, every blanket that is of Basutu, that's how we know. There are stripes in it, yellow, white, or red. The one that Prince Tumelo is wearing, I think it's red. Those stripes must always be vertical. Vertical is down, up, right? They must always be vertical. If you want us, even at your wedding, to come and, and, and we get so infuriated that we will come and rip it off you is when you are making them to be horizontal. They must always be vertical. That is the correct way of wearing it. And, and we take pride in it. So, but otherwise, I'm, I'm just kidding. We will not be, be inferior, but we just go and say, can we make a way? We wear it with the, with the safety pin. The big safety pin is Kobosh. And uh, so that is, that is our blanket. And then you will see also what I'm wearing is our royal, Ngwe is our totem animal. So we have got these now as Batokwa. We wear these. Prince Tumelo will be probably wearing his there the next time. We just made it so that we can bring the diversity of the fashion that we have in the Southern Africa in our cultures. And because of this uh, show, we just had to bring two at least. So I'm wearing this uh, one of mine. It's actually made a, as a blanket, but also it's in a sort of a cape that you wear. And this has been made also very popular by our very Queen Mantatisi, the historical region queen who created this nation, who really, really, really fought for us. And today we are walking on, on, on that um, path that she paved and making the name for us and being the warrior that she, that she was. So I'm wearing that. And then here on our heads, we wear the crown. We wear the crown. The headgear for us as girls, as princesses is not so much, um, it's really not, not for us, it's for our mothers. Even in the Batoka, in the Basutu, to cover the head is not as pedantic as other uh, cultural. Basutu, we are very popular as well by just going uh, with our bald heads. Most of the time you probably would, would, will notice, we go with our bald heads and we are still fine, even as women, it's still okay. The crown is just um, one of those gifts as well, like we were saying that they are our accessories. That's how every girl gets taught the skill of making so that you can adorn yourself. In the olden days, remember our makeup was what you are putting on. And then, and also when that girl is saying yes to, to that hand of whoever the guy that is proposing, you give out whatever your, one of the accessories that you made as a gift to do because, and you're saying that is the yes, so that, that it's, it remains with him as a gift. So these are the accessories, it's what you make as well, even from the grass debate, they are called. So that is what we wear. You would see further down on our ankles also, there are those uh, bangles that we wear in the ankles. And uh, yes, so that is how our regalia goes. Then there is situation, which is everybody knows situation in the colorful uh, uh, dresses that are made for women mostly. And there are now suits for, for males. The, you'll see people in the weddings, they wear those. Then there's one way I'm wearing, which is called Tibita. That one is not so much um, popular, but it is one by the Basutu. And then that one is a very, very important uh, garment that is worn by a um, also one of the, uh, the highest mothers or the queens or even the bride, but it is quite big, it's huge and it is very well decorated. This Easter, welcome and spend your Easter holidays at Adere Safari Lodge in the vast savanna of Kedepo Valley National Park, Uganda. We provide you with exotic ambience of beautiful cottages, rooms and swimming pool at affordable rates of 125 US dollars for Uganda resident per person sharing and 150 US dollars for foreigners at full board. 
We also offer memorable and restful transformation safaris at a tour to Karamoja. Adere Safari Lodge, everything right where you need it. We love having you here. For more information, contact our telephone number below. And uh, yes, so what I'm wearing today is the uh, uh, one of the uh, garments or blankets that we make in uh, uh, Batlokwa that we put on uh, as our traditional regalia. So there's different names because they are made with different patterns and they have different meanings, obviously, uh, to it. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting that uh, we touched briefly on how uh, people who may not be familiar or may not know what it means uh, may actually misrepresent, you know, uh, some of our cultures because of lack of uh, understanding. But what I'm wearing in short today, uh, this one is called Siana Marena. Red translation in English is uh, swearing by the chiefs. So the design or the pattern here on this one is the concorp uh, pattern. So the meaning of that, the symbol itself, uh, uh, is understood to mean uh, fertility and wealth, which uh, also is uh, a description of how our elders used to live back in the days. So you can see that also we do not come from a background of a uh, leg of poverty, but even with that original understanding, you know, our elders used to live and, 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 and thrive in an environment of fertility and wealth, you know, based on the agricultural uh, 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 environment which they thrived in. Within the Kosa nation, we've got um, a number of tribes. So I belong to the Klesibe tribes. We're called Ama Klesibe. Um, I come from a small town called Ematosibeni. So we are right in the border of, of, of Transkai and Natal. So as Amatlesibe, we do have our own um, regalia, which is slowly fading because we we sort of got into the whole um, Tosa nation um, clothing as well. So it's, it's very rare that we find um, people that are actually wearing authentic um, Siberia regalia. So it is very rare now because we, we've adopted the Kosa Nation um, regalia, which is Umbato, and we use a lot of beads, um, you know. So there's, there's different colors to Umbato. Um, you've got, originally you would have the orange um, color and, and the white. Now there's a number of other colors as well. There's a blue one that is used. Most of the fabric that was used back then, it's it's very rare to find. And now people are sort of modernizing it and still using similar colors, but in a different fabric. But when you find the original one, you'll actually know because it's very heavy. Um, it's, it, it's very rich in texture. So there's always a, a difference. But what I see is that it is being modernized now um, that people are actually now wearing it for what we usually, the Western wedding, where we call it white wedding, but they will still infuse their um, umbat or traditional wear into it and modernize it. So basically that, that's, that's where I come from. We are a, a big nation with a lot of, lot of tribes. We speak different languages within the Kosa nation. Only a Kosa person can tell that this one is a Klesibe because of the accent, the tone, um, and also some of the words that we use. So we have Amapata, uh, which our, um, is like our neighboring tribe. We've got Amampondo. Um, so there's a number of tribes, Amampondo Misa, within the whole Kosa nation. So we all have a bit of difference in, in, in our regalia, so which is still really fading out, and, and people now are just adopting the Umbato. Um, professionally, I, I am in the ICT space with a marketing background, brand development, and I just love um, fashion, having worked in a corporate space in, in, in business all the time. So this is where my passion is, where I find that 
we are sort of missing the traditional clothing into the business space, into the corporate space. You sort of have a, a defined um, idea of what you need to look like when you go into an office or going to a meeting. This is the space where I play in and bringing and fusing traditional clothing and into the corporate world. How can you take your umbato, make it fashionable, still be presentable and not look like you're going to a, 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 a function? You know, just make it wearable for an office space and you can still take it anywhere, walk into any boardroom with your sishwe or looking outfit. So that's the, the space that I am in. I'm in the ICT space playing in the fourth industrial revolution and also part of the IDO network and as the ICT director of, 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 of IDO network. One of the things that I, I really want to, to specify when we look at the fashion is the opportunity that exists. Um, being from an entrepreneurial break, background, I'll just look at the opportunities. And this is something that I want us to look at as, as Africans the space that we can play in, in the global markets. Um, there's one thing that we have as, 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 as Africans in general, we've got so many different cultures. So we are rich in culture. When we are rich in culture, we are rich in, 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 in knowledge. We are rich in what we have to offer. And as Africans, there's something that we have that is just distinctly us, you know, um, it's, it's a vibrancy that comes through our fashion, our clothing. If you look at our, our clothes um, for, in all the different countries, there's that vibrancy, there's that color, there's the ethnic tones um, that always come up. And that comes up beautifully in, 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 in fashion. So if we embrace all of that that we have and be able to package it so that we can compete in the global space, we, we see a number of um, designers, international designers, um, dominating our markets locally where people are going, uh, buying all these labels, yet we're not seeing a dominance um, in, in people buying our own African um, clothing. So this is something that I, I, I really want us to, to move from, where if you can see what I'm, I'm, I'm wearing beads as an accessory to the office, this is me going to the office. And if we start infusing that and say, whether it's our accessories, whether it's our clothing, let's start infusing it in, into our fashion so that it, it gets, it becomes normal. So in South Africa, we've got a day called um, Heritage Day, which is on the 24th of September. This is the one day where you can wear your regalia to work, your traditional clothing to work. And I wonder why are we doing this only just for one day? It should be allowed where it should be normal um, where we all can wear our traditional clothing to office, to work, and not people assuming that you're going to a specific function or a certain function. So what we have done, the mindset is that African regalia is aligned to a function or a celebration of some sort, but not so much into the corporate world. And you find that the younger people, the younger generation are actually losing touch of the African tradition, which is if we don't put it into the mainstream, we, we stand a chance of losing, um, of losing our culture completely when it comes to, to fashion. So I think this is where the role now of the traditional leaders, um, institutes like what Princess Sebi is doing, training young people, women in the rural communities to do their own beats so that we can export all of this to the world and also keep it alive within the, the younger generation. And if you look at Africa, it's a very young generation, I mean, it's a young population. So if we do not cater for the young person, if we do not educate the young person on our tradition, on our, on our culture and the meaning of it, you know, we're gonna lose it and find that our fashion is being now overtaken by what the world is bringing. Um, this is one thing. And also manufacturing is critical that we manufacture so that we can still tell the story we can still have our authentic clothing and, and not just replicas of what we, we, we are used to. One of the examples I always like to make is uh, how uh, Dr. Mamu Esther Masangu has commercialized the Ndebele culture. That is a typical example of how a culture um, can be commercialized through different things. You know, that is art, that is fashion if that is infused together, this is what the world is looking for, then how do we start seeing that as, as, as the Africans? You know, um, what roles can we play and you, you know, forums that we can form so that even the designers that are coming up, 
can be able to take pride in their own traditional clothing and be able to make that so that it can fit the global um, nation. Look at uh, local designers like Omar Kosa. Um, you know, he showcased first in the Milan or Paris Fashion Week before he got big in, in, in South Africa. That is Kosa clothing. That is a pattern that you see. That, that is, um, you know, our Kosa uh, patterns. So, but it is done in a way that it, anyone, a young person can wear it, a person anywhere in the world can wear it without losing who we are or without losing the, 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 the message um, in, in, in the translation. You may advertise your business on Aido Roots of Africa program by sponsoring a slot on TV or radio. And if you wish to donate content on Roots of Africa, kindly donate using the link below or contact marketing at info at aidonetwork.org. So well put, you have covered it. So now tell us, since you are in the, within the ICT, the fourth industrial, here we are making the business. Now we want to infuse the fourth industrial so that we can make our arts craft, so that we can make our, our, our indigenous, um, even the fabrics and even within the space, fashionable and relevant and attractive to the youth. How can we infuse the fourth industrial into the work that we are doing as indigenous communities? Right now we're in the fourth industrial revolution era, um, technology is taking over. And that is an opportunity also for the textile industry and the fashion say. So there is so much that is happening and opportunities that lie uh, within that. Firstly, there's, there's the printing, you know, we've got now the 3D printing going to 4D printing, um, which can make things easier and cheaper. So which is, it breaks the barriers of entry for people who would, you know, what they would need to actually start. And also there are softwares and technology, digital printing also, where you can actually manufacture our own fabric. We can do our own prints, you know. Um, we can go as far as taking our own pictures of our own landscapes and making fabric out of those. So there's a, there's a great opportunity where we can actually showcase Africa in, 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 a, in a fashion format, also using digital printing as well. So we can have uniquely um, um, fabric. And there's also different ways of making fabric, um, you know, that are also authentic using our own material, raw materials that we, that, that we have. It even goes to the raw materials that we have, the commodities we have like gold. And that is still, that's something that we, we own and that can be translated into fashion. So instead of just exporting all, all the gold, we can actually focus on manufacturing, polishing and making jewelry out of that, like um, what the organization with Princess Tepi are, are, are already doing. The other opportunity lies within also the gaming industry. The gaming industry um, and now, there's things called digital fashion, where uh, it's very exciting because normally I would take a picture. If I want to change my, my whole attire, I can do it digitally and own a digital wardrobe. So you can sell design and have digital wardrobes where it's only traditional clothing that that you use even in the gaming space now which is very big it's a huge market they they called they're called skins where the avatars have to be dressed in a certain way so you can have your your avatars dressed in a in a, in a traditional African way so that even the kids that are playing these games can also identify and see the traditional clothing or attire being worn in the games. That's where it all starts so that they can relate. It changes their mindset as well. So that when they see something, it looks familiar and maybe we can push some education through that space as well. So when they buying a certain outfit, it comes with the message that says, this is um, a, 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 a Corsa regalia, or you were worn on this. If you are a king, this is what you were. So I think this is also something that we need to do. When we are even doing the fabric, if we are exporting, let us export it with the message um, that says, this is why, this is how it's worn, this is where it comes from, so that this is how we're gonna keep it alive. So even the garments that designers make, 
it will be nice to have a little note when you buy something to say it is made by women from Ingutu um, using this type of beads. Um, this is the meaning behind the colors so that the person that buys this can actually be able to tell the story. So the fourth industrial revolution allows us to actually scale and open up opportunities. And we need to be looking at having digital fashion shows also where you can invite people on a Zoom call and be able to showcase globally, you know, take the work that is being done and have virtual um, fashion shows. That doesn't stop us. Now there's an opportunity of actually having that e-commerce mm -hmm. sites where we can be able to buy African clothing. People struggle. Where do I buy? Where do I find an African seamstress? Where do I buy African clothing? Also, with now the, 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 the 3D printing and all the opportunities, it can actually take down the cost because that's another thing people always complain about the cost that the, we would like to support, but the price is too high. So because other countries are doing mass manufacturing, so they, they can afford to lower down the price. So with the 3D printing and what we have now, and if we scale up our manufacturing, we can actually lower our price point so that um, it is accessible to everyone that wants to wear it as a daily, um, as a daily wear. So there's, there's so much opportunity that comes. And I think with the, with the colors, with the tones, with the textures that we have as a continent, if we can make use of, uh, of connecting with the different um, countries and share knowledge and share fabric, you know, we can actually come up with something, um, you know, beautiful where we can infuse something um, and, and come up with distinctly African clothing. I think this is where now with the fourth industrial revolution can actually assist us into scaling things faster and opening up the market to, um, the, to the younger people as well and give us a global reach um, quicker. Remember to listen to Star Radio every Friday at 3 p.m. GMT time, 6 p.m. East African time, hosting our kings, queens, prince and princess, African leaders, investors, talking about the roots of Africa. And follow us on AIDO Network International social media platforms and Raya TV social media platform. Okay, I would like to appeal to the investors, to all the business partners, people that are looking for opportunities to say Africa is ready all African countries, South Africa is ready. Us as the indigenous communities, we are ready. We are ready, we are waiting. Us as women businesses, we are ready. Us as youth businesses, we are ready. Partner with IDOL Network. You have seen IDOL showcasing in November, then Lovu Jewelry. That's what we are talking about. Things that we have already done. Thing where we have access to the businesses that are truly African and for Africa by Africans. So that partner with us as the IDOL Network, partner with us as the Royal Batokwa and all other kingdoms that we have, and then partner with us as organizations that are like-minded, that are promoting, that are pro-Africa and for the business and the development of our communities. And also because we are the people on the ground, it does not help when you are coming to do business without us. It can only be called business because there's a transaction and there is that collaboration. So from me, it says we are ready Come all investors, let us do this project and let us see the mutual benefits. Thank you. Yeah, so I think let's also call on the established uh, fashion uh, designers, you know, especially those uh, of an African uh, descent, uh, those that have made it you know, beyond the African continent. And I mean, we know quite a few um, amongst ourselves. You know, let them be open-minded and also explore this uh, area, you know, where we want to develop the African and traditional um, attires, you know, and put them out there on the market. It can always be an additional element or a, a, a diversion to their traditional, you know, shows that they put out to say, here's also, you know, one extra piece, you know, at a time. But I think in doing that also, we must create opportunities at the low end, you know, for new entrants, you know, provide uh, the training in terms of uh, fashion designing, you know, modeling and all this. And that can be incorporated into what uh, Princess Tseb is already doing with her organization, you know, so that it's not only on the business skills, but even on the actual, you know, designing and uh, of their products themselves. 
Thank you. This Easter, welcome and spend your Easter holidays at Adere Safari Lodge in the vast savanna of Kedepo Valley National Park, Uganda. We provide you with exotic ambience of beautiful cottages, rooms, and swimming pools at affordable rates of 125 US dollars for Uganda residents per person sharing and 150 US dollars for foreigners at full board. We also offer memorable and restful transformation safaris and a tour to Karamoja. Adere Safari Lodge, everything right where you need it. We love having you here. For more information, contact our telephone number below. Um, I would like to say Africa is is a rich, literally we are we are rich in in, in people and in culture, in in minds in stories. So let us be able to 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 package that to the world. The opportunity exists when we realize it. So as Africans, it's it's high time that we take pride in who we are. It's high time that we take pride in our culture. Go back into understanding who we are as 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 as, as a culture. As a, as a continent and be able to package that so that the world and not wait for the world to come to us, you know? So we need to start working from where we are and start collaborating. The different cultures doesn't mean we, we work in silos. It means we can learn something, we can borrow something from each other and infuse it together so that we can come up with this beautiful um, pieces that we can showcase to the world. And also with the, Fourth Industrial Revolution opening up the doors for us. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for partnerships. The market is open. Um, global fashion houses are coming to the country. Global production houses are coming to the country um, and to the continent as a whole. So let us take advantage of those opportunities and showcase our culture um, through fashion. And we've got beautiful, you know, we've got everything that we need. So this is the collaborations that we need. Let us collaborate um, with IDOR Network, opening the opportunities for us. And this is the, the, the only way that we can grow through collaboration, through learning from each other and infusing, and also just being proud of, the, of our traditional clothing wear and wear it every day, put a piece, whether it's the earrings, it's a headgear, the beads that you can take with to work, but just try and use it in your daily work. And uh, this is how we can actually grow. You may advertise your business on AIDO Roots of Africa program by sponsoring a slot on TV or radio. And if you wish to donate content of Roots of Africa, kindly donate using the link below or contact marketing at info at aidonetwork.org. Wow, thank you very much our guest tonight for the insight of the South African culture. And thank you. And we've all heard that we can infuse our traditional culture with the modern culture and still look the same, feel the same, and still have the same meaning. Well, I won't talk much for tonight. I'll just say, Hamba Hale. Hamba Hale. Be blessed. Makina, Amina, na 